there you go. And as part of that, look, the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders in the ring in San Antonio. I guess they, they can export them throughout Texas, I guess. Yo, we got X Games, Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. <laughs> We're talking Spurs, some boxing. Everything's happening in San Antonio. Our main event is next. Antonio Cermeno and Joe Morales. Joe and Teddy will have the call on Friday Night Fights when we return. fighters with one trying to get back to where he once belonged. Antonio Cermino doesn't need to sell anyone. At now 41 and 4, he's a respected veteran. This 34-year-old Venezuelan is a former two-time world titleist at 122 pounds and once held a featherweight belt. Eight years ago, his unanimous decision over Wilfredo Vasquez would be followed by a string of seven defenses. Ostensibly, that unbeaten run was to secure his position as a worthy world champ. But Freddie Norwood was Cermino's personal spoiler. In a span of 13 months, Norwood took two wins from Cermino, including his featherweight crown. Since then, Antonio's career has slowed down, but last August he got back on track in Florida with his steady and solid win over Marcos Padilla. For Joe Morales, fighting a world-class opponent is nothing new. His 25 pro fights have given him plenty of worthwhile experiences. In his last five, San Antonio's native son has gone two and three against bigger names. That includes Zahir Rahim and Joe Casamayor. In fact, that TKO loss to the then world champion was his biggest test to date. A cut over the left eye caused the stoppage. It is still noticeable, but hasn't opened up since. What has opened up since is his ability to learn from these valuable challenges. Now Joe Morales gets another chance to meet an established veteran, but this time it's on his terms in his town. Can the backdrop of San Antonio spur their hometown hero towards a win? Having the people on my side, that's going to boost my confidence level, you know, and I, you know, I feel that's where everything's going to come out. You know, everything I've done at the gym and everything I've done, you know, through all these eight months, you know, of layoff, you know, is going to pay off, you know, tonight. Former three-time world titleist Antonio Cermino, now 34 years old, a native of Miranda, Valenzuela, now calls Miami home. His 41-4 and four record split up into three distinct phases, 18-1 right into the rankings. Then he had that meaty career, winning belts at 122, 126. Now this, Teddy's tips for the former champ. Number one, use your height and your jab. Take the advantage of being tall by using long arms. And that means extending your left hand, keeping the shorter Morales outside. Then you want to spot up the right hand. If the first part of the fight plan goes right and you establish your jab, then there should be range and plenty of spots to land the right hand. And finally, if the right hand lands, find, make sure you finish with that left hook. Now, if you follow number one and two, you've gained control of range, and you land in the right hand. It's time to close the show by coming back with the left hook and landing two punches instead of one with the tough Morales. Joe Morales, he's been up against the best in the division before. This is the first time the 28-year-old gets to do it in his backyard. 18 and 7, just four knockouts. But most of his pro career has been making up for the fact that he had very little amateur experience. Teddy's tips for San Antonio's Joe. Well, if Morales is going to beat the former world champion, former two division champ double up the jab double not single with Semino's height you'll need two jabs to close the gap one will leave you outside and vulnerable for the right hand make it short two and second go to the body go there early Semino has a slender body start hitting him to slow him down later in the fight but you must begin early don't wait for the stretch run it'll be too late once inside stay there don't pull back out you've done that before where you have to deal with his height all over again Get in there and go to work. Ten rounds, Rafael Ramos, the ref. Okay. Okay. Joe Morales says he's a hardcore, old-school San Antonio fighter. He goes by the nickname the Zarzamora Kid, that's the name of the rundown gym 
that Joe's been working out in for years. Run down before Tony Ayala and others came, fixed it up, and he stayed there through all the changes. He prides himself on being one of the guys that have seen them come and go in the San Antonio fight scene. Underway, scheduled for 10 rounds. These featherweights, the former champ against the hometown kid. Antonio Sermino, or Someno, if you prefer the dialect. Betty and I going with the American vernacular and what has been commonly spoken here this week in San Antonio, Antonio Sermino. I don't know what the heck he's saying, but if it sounds good, <laughs> I'm with you. As long as it's a good fight, it doesn't matter, Teddy. No, it doesn't. To be a good fight, Sermino, the former two-division world champion, starts with that jab. Look at his height. You don't need me to tell you that with that height, you're going to want to use that jab, that long left arm control range and then make the shorter man start to play your game he stays outside take him apart off that jab set shots up off that jab get full extension with the right hand if he starts to come in counter him change your distance a little bit keep those gaps in range and make your opponent walk into traps any way you look at it if you're a Sabino, it starts with that long rangy left hand And this hot weather can really play a part in this fight, too. Even though both these fighters, Tomino from Venezuela, Morales from this hot state of Texas, are used to that kind of warm environment, both these fighters took the fight on short notice. We will see who was in better shape. One of them was probably in the gym more so than the other. If this pace is fast enough, we'll find out as we go down the stretch. Tomino trying to target with that big rangy left hand set up that right you know you talk about Teddy the fact that both guys took it on short notice Sermino didn't seem faced at all when his manager told him about the opportunity to fight on Friday night fights he got real excited because he wanted to be on ESPN and even though we told you he's got the title belts in the past he has never had any exposure on American television and he really wanted to come on the ESPN and have the chance of showing the American viewing public what he's capable of doing as the inside work of Joe Morales scores with that right hand. Morales has been using his legs trying to keep the taller Semino off balance, not set to punch. Semino does have that height, but he needs to be set. He needs you right in front of him. He doesn't switch his legs. He doesn't adjust his legs real quickly. So you can see Morales, that's his style anyway to box. He's trying to give angles, trying to surprise Semino, come in when he doesn't expect it. Way versus Liston. Schmelling has sent Lewis down. Lewis versus Schmelling. Now you can own the definitive collection of boxing's greatest fights. Bill Caton, one of boxing's most revered managers, has released his own collection of radio broadcasts on audio CDs. Primetime boxing. Many of these fights were never filmed and are preserved only on these digitally remastered recordings. For the first time ever, this great collection is being offered to the public from Bill's private collection. Between each round, rare inside information about the fights and the fighters is provided by Bill himself. Listen to the great call of the most legendary announcers of all time. Hear the fights that thrilled millions of people around the world. Has fallen. Call now to order primetime boxing. You get over 10 hours of historic sports excitement on 13 CDs. Don't miss this rare opportunity to own this collection. Call now. Friday night fights. Big night out in San Antonio from Sunset Station. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you. Our main event scheduled for 10 rounds. Former three-time champion Antonio Cermino against local hometown favorite Joe Morales. Well, similar to the last fight, for me, is I mentioned in the last fight early on that Adams had to work because of his style a lot harder. And that meant something in his heat than Rodriguez had to do. Rodriguez was set. He had the height. He could allow Adams to move into shots. 
Adams had to really use that ring and had to really work a lot harder to get things done. It's the same thing here. Morale is working a lot harder to get things down than Tamino. Rodriguez, or Morales, has to use the ring, moves around. He covers a lot more distance and space than Tamino does. Just watch Morales. With an overhead shot, you get a good idea of the leg movement of Morales. He makes about six, seven moves to set up what he initially really wants to do, what's going to really bring him there. Tamino doesn't have to waste any of that kind of motion or energy. Former champion Tonio Tamino, he just looks really, really big for a featherweight, and he fights big, but at times there's an awkwardness to him that is a benefit. Targeting that left hand again. He had a useful jab in that first round. Trying to score again here in the second round. If you're just joining us earlier tonight, great action in our first fight between Jason Adams and Eric Rodriguez. At the start of this fight card, it was 100 degrees here in downtown San Antonio. It hasn't cooled off that much, and the heat looking to play a factor throughout the evening. When you're tall like Tamino, the former world champion, it's always important to use that jab. But when the style really, really forces you to, it's even more important. And this style really makes it important for Tamino to use that jab. Otherwise, he's going to allow Morales to control the rhythm, to dart in and out, and to give him problems, like a mosquito at a barbecue would give you problems. He zips in, he zips out on you. Right now, the style of Morales giving Tamino a problem. No punch, no punch. I got it. I, 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 no. Let's go. Doesn't Miller Lite taste great? Let's Billy! Wait, 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 wait. What about this? Doesn't Miller Lite taste great? Great taste! Great taste! Let's Billy! Great taste! That's art. <laughs> Tell it over a great tasting, less filling Miller Light. It's Miller time. I've got an idea. <laughs> Next week, Friday Night Vice is in Concho, Oklahoma. Teddy and Bob will have the cruiserweight action for you with the veteran O'Neill Bell. His 21 and 1 record goes up against the compact and powerful Kelvin Davis the NABF USDA cruiserweight title. That's next week on Friday Night Fights. O'Neal Bell, Kelvin Davis, Friday Night Fights. Boxing for four. <laughs> Round number three here in San Antonio between Antonio Cermino and Joe Morales. Joe Morales hasn't fought since last August. Reason being, he had about three fights postponed this winter into the spring. Real happy to be back in action, especially here in his hometown of San Antonio. Well, for that matter, Tamino's been off the same amount of time. Both of them have been in action for nine months. That's even. And both guys taking this fight on short notice. So who is working harder in the gym? She is it moves on here. We're in round number three, scheduled for 10. This fight's going to come down to whose style is going to be used more consistently. This style is going to grab on. They're both distinct styles, different styles. Daddy, you like Joe Morales in the first two rounds here. He's having his way a little bit. Keeping the tall Semino from dominating with his jab and keeping him from setting up that spear, the right hand. Tamino better start going to the body a little bit. Slow down Morales a little bit. Take some of that ability to wander around the ring away from him. Flatten those tires. Oh 
two different styles here. Camino straight up. That real traditional boxing style tall. Use that jab, try to set up the right hand. And Morales. Like I said earlier, he could be like a gnat, in and out on you, buzz all over the place. But he's smart. He's, he knows that he wants to keep Zamino off balance. And that's why he's using the ring, keeping Zamino moving his feet, not letting him get set. The thing that Morales has to really make sure that he has to cross his T's, dot his eyes with, is that he gets all the way out where he makes Tomino reach like that. Or he gets all the way in where he takes away the height advantage of Tomino and doesn't allow Tomino with those long arms to work inside. But he can't just stay at the end of the punches in that medium range. Morales must not stay in that no man zone at the end of the jab. All the way out, all the way in, off to the side. You know what? He'll be doing okay. Working well here in the third round. It comes to athlete's foot. This is the latest. This isn't. Lotrimin Ultra, the latest prescription strength medicine available without a prescription. The latest cure, so ultra powerful. One use a day is all you need. Nothing's proven stronger or faster. Lotrimin Ultra. Want to make your car look like new again? Color Cure Color Enriching Car Polish from Turtle Wax conceals minor scratches while it shines and protects. For deeper scratches, use the included Color Cure chipstick. There's a Color Cure to match most every car from Turtle Wax. Who's the one with the potential, the skills to make... The Buck Show. In the third round... The connects through three rounds with another solid round for the local Joe Morales. 84 connects for Sermino and 43 overall for Morales. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas. Fourth round here from San Antonio. You know, it's funny. I'm pointing out the advantages of the former world champion, Domino. Tall, experienced, long, long arms. I got it, I got it, no, 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 no. That can be turned hey, into a disadvantage. Out. Time out. But he doesn't get the height he wants. You okay? Cuidado con la cabeza entrando, okay? There's a, bien. There's a head. Time in, let's go. Banging the head there, the referee just taking a look, making sure everything's okay. But like I was saying, with the Tomino, we look at the advantage of his height. But then you forget sometimes the disadvantage. If you don't stand at that height and cooperate with him, then you look at the disadvantages. He needs to be set on his feet. He's looking one way, only straight down the pipe, straight down the highway when you come at him. You give him angles, all of a sudden there's some warts of Tomino. And Morales is trying to show those warts. You saw the jab numbers there through three rounds. Termino with the edge, not necessarily as effective on paper as it has shown up in the ring. See, Termino, nice, great height. Just looks good. But when you don't stand at the end of him and allow him to pulverize you with that jab, sting you with that jab, freeze you with that jab, and then set up the right hand, and you're giving movement, the way Morales is giving movement, in and out, side to side. Also, on that great height. Well, it doesn't do all that much for it. Break! Break! Let's go, no. Let's go. Let's go. A lot of people would say, well, Morales, shorter man, looks like he's physically stronger. He has to press forward. That's not his style. His style is the box. And even though he's in there with a taller guy, he's not feeling pressure to say, I got to work my way in and just be inside. That is not his forte. What he's trying to do is just keep Tomino off balance. Ah, keep a little bit. Sometimes let Tomino give up his height by moving backwards. Make Tomino come forward. Give up some of that height. 
right there. If you're driving around with worn out brake pads on your car, that's dangerous. Get to AutoZone for a new set of brakes today. Get in the zone. AutoZone. We here at Office Depot know you don't have a lot of time to shop for office supplies, so we make it easy with special sections loaded with the absolute essentials. Ink and toner, paper, envelopes, memo pads, files, file folders, stickies and pens, so you can get what you really need. Really fast. Office Depot. What you need, what you need to know. Hemisphere Tower overlooking San Antonio, not far away from the scene of this week's Friday Night Fight, Sunset Station. Joe Tessator alongside Teddy Atlas. Antonio Cermino and Joe Morales. Tight fight through four rounds in that fourth round. These two fighters combined for 207 punches thrown. Morales through 116. Who says you just have to walk in like Henry Armstrong or Joe Frazier or Mike Tyson when you're in there with a shorter guy or a taller guy? The shorter guy, Morales, in there with the taller man, Camino, of the boxing. Not doing it the conventional way, not walking right in, getting inside. And I think Camino starting to realize he needs to slow down that kind of attempt from Morales. He's starting to get in close, bang the body room. That experience of Semino, the former champ, is starting to show a little bit. Starting to get his range a little better, where he can start to tee up that right hand. Starting to try to get Morales to be at the end of the gym, instead of all the way out or all the way in. Or instead of on the side. Morales trying to sneak that right uppercut in. You know, Morales has been in with some bigger names before, and he claims that one of the reasons he thinks that he has come up on the short end is not so much because of the physical gifts and tools, but because of confidence and confidence that he lacks because he knows that the other guys have a bigger resume, bigger accomplishments. Well, his confidence has to be pretty good, Morales, because even though over the career, Tamino, the former three-time world champion has fought much better opposition, but recently, Morales has fought the better opposition. Good right hand from Joe Morales. Local crowd looking for a reason to get behind him here. Cermino and Morales. Well, a few weeks ago in Norman, Oklahoma on Friday Night Fights, we took a look at San Antonio's Tony Ayala Jr. And boy, did we find out something against Anthony Bonsante. In the 11th round, he came up with this flurry against Ayala. And the referee stopped it for a TKO win for Anthony Basante against the 40-year-old Tony Ayella. Tonight, Tony Ayella Sr. 
is in the corner of Joe Morales. There's Junior. And we met with his father yesterday and he told us that he doesn't want to see his son fight anymore, but it's going to be up to Junior. Of course, spent 17 years behind bars, came back in 1999. Nine and two in those four years in that second phase of his career. Teddy, what do you think of the future of Tony Ayala Jr.? That's kind of almost a ridiculous question. He's 40 years old. He's shown that he cannot do what once looked like a very, very promising career. You don't get better when you're 40. He just got stopped in his last fight by a very gutsy Bastante. But a guy who's not one of the top, top fighters. If he's going to make it in his career, now at this point, he'd have to go up there with the top echelon guys. He's shown that that part of his life is past you agree with that, as most would. Sixth round, Cermino and Morales. Both guys took this fight on short notice. Both guys seem to be in good shape in this hot night in San Antonio. And for Joe Morales, that is a challenge because he works in a Mexican candy factory full time. Says it's very tempting when you're in training and trying to make weight to scoop up some of that sugar and give yourself a little sugar high, but obviously, He's well disciplined. Well, even though his style makes him work harder in the heat, he's only 28 years old. Semino, 34. And Semino comes from Venezuela. That trip added with the two facts of taking the fight on short notice and the heat. That can make a difference. And the style of Morales well, is not allowing Semino to shine with his style. Not allowing him to set up that right hand, not allowing him to use that jab. Just select the spots that he wants to send down that laser right hand. Morales keeping him off balance, making Semino keep moving his feet. And when Semino has to move his feet, he can't use his height. See, that's where being tall, Joe, hurts. Great to be tall if you use that height properly and you punch at the right distance. But if you allow the shorter man, in this case Morales, to get into your punching zone or his punching zone, and you're still standing tall, there's a lot of target to be found. And Morales targeting that right hand, and he does it again. There's target for that right hand because when he gets into distance, Tamino, the tall man, the ball, that big flagpole, is standing out there like a flagpole. And it's easy to put a mark on it. That's where the tall guys have to learn. I got it, I got it, I got it, either taught or you're it's not taught. They have to learn. When the shorter guy gets into your position, don't be proud, don't be stubborn, don't be dumb. Get small. You don't want to be tall when a short guy gets in close to you. You want to get your head on the side. Be tall later on. Every day, Western Union provides many possibilities for you to send money to the people you care about. That's why Western Union has over 150,000 agent locations across the globe. Because we understand, when you're helping a loved one who's just starting out, you're sending more than just money. Western Union. In person, by phone, by internet. Uniting people with possibilities. Well, we're going to see here a replay from the last round about Semino standing a little tall and making himself a target for the right hand. You can see Semino working the left hand, stands tall, and Morales jumps into his range and able to find that right hand. Now we're going to get another angle on this. And this angle, once again, you see, being tall, standing straight up. Oh, there's a target for the right hand for Morales. Seventh round, Joe Morales, a very game effort, sticking to his game plan. And so far, his hometown San Antonio crowd enjoying it. Over the top with another right hand, and he's got Cermino hurt. No 
He got him with two right hands in the sixth round. In the first 30 seconds here of the seventh round, Joe Morales scores again. The cut in the corner of the right eye, above the right eye of Morales. And that's why there's a break here. The referee's going to bring the doctor in to look at it. Unintentional headbutt. Unintentional. And you heard Rafael Ramos, the referee, saying it was an unintentional headbutt. Unintentional course, headbutt. We're... You okay? Let's go. Time in. Does not look bad. Right now, morale is turning south for Strategically, it's been a good night for trainer Tony Ayala Sr. and Joe Morales. Past four minutes of action has gone very well for them. All night long, Domingo has not been able to take full advantage of his style. He's been forced to give up his height, to walk forward. And he's got a little height. And once he got a little distance there, it didn't take him long to do what he wants to do. Snap off the right hand. That's what he's trying to do all night long. Time out. Time. Stop. Come here. Come here. Come here. Keep it clean, okay? Leave your mano. Vamos. Let's go. Okay. Time in. Let's go. A little roughhousing by Morales. Something we saw out of him when he fought to hear Raheem. He threw Raheem to the canvas several times. In fact, was penalized late in that fight in the 10th round on his way to a loss. And morale is turning south for a couple times this round. He's thinking in there. Keeping Semenya off balance any way he can. He now is all the way inside those long arms. Get all the way inside. That's the trick. Get on the side. That's the trick. Get all the way outside. Don't stand in front. I got it. I got it. Semenya just has not been able to use his style. been forced to try to find some other way to change his fight. Walking in, giving up his height, he doesn't want to do that, but he's been forced to do that. And he's been kept off balance a lot tonight. Come on, guys, let's go. moving in and out, surprising for Morales, surprising Camino, in and out. And scoring good when he gets inside those long arms. Well, damage done by both fighters in the seventh round. Here's what happened early on in that seventh round when Morales got to Sermino. See Semino slipping there on the emblem. Right hand starts things off. Well, once Morales is able to get in close, there's a little push, a little bit of slip. It wasn't really the punch. But punches did land. And those punches landed because the shorter Morales got into his punching range. Now here at the end, you see the push. Morales feels that he's getting his way. He's at home. He's a stronger guy physically. He's trying to impose his will and his physical being on Semino. Do anything he can to put himself in edge. Joe Morales, they call him the Zarzamora Street Kid. The nickname from the gym that he works out in here in downtown San Antonio. Scheduled for 10 rounds. This is the eighth round between Morales and the former champion. Through seven rounds. The punch stat, Morales has thrown 603, Sermino 602. I got it. No punch it. Let's go. As we said earlier, Morales' confidence has been as good as it can be, probably, getting ready for this important fight of his career. Even though Sermino has been a three-time world champion, has fought the better fighters, as I said earlier, over all his career. Recently, Morales has fought some real good fighters, or at least some good opponents. The records of the last five opponents, Morales, 88, 7, and 4. Compared to 80, 51, and 13 for Semino. 
The morale comes into the fight, having been primed with good opposition. The timing was right, and his fight plan has been good. He's got a former world champion, wants to set him up, wants him to stand in front of him. Oh, he's got his sweater stare shoes on. And he's not gonna, he's not gonna let the mean you'll be a stand puck. And to your point, Teddy, I think there's a big difference between being in there with Kazemayor and being in here with, with an aging Antonio Cermino. He's seen some of the very best, and now it's starting to pay off in his career. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, hey, come on, come on, let's go. Here it is, the taller, you see how roles have been reversed, how when you come to a fight, you think you're gonna get to fight your style, you know what you wanna do. It doesn't always turn out that way. Camino thought he could stay at the end of his jam, set up that right hand. He's gotta come forward, he's gotta get inside. He's got those long arms. He's not great at using them inside. He'd rather use them on the outside. He's being sport. But these are both. Not the matador. So, where do you go? That's going to be interesting. You go to the style of Morales, who's trying to do what he wants to do, keep Serrano fighting his fight, or do you go with the aggression? Probably this round you go with the aggression of Semenyo. He's pressing the fight. He's making the fight, even though nothing real substantial is happening. With new Odor Eaters Plus. Odor Eaters Plus is the only insole with podiatric arch support plus protection on demand against odor and wetness. Introducing new body wash from Old Spice. Put my love to the test. It has a dual action formula, so you'll get really clean, smell really great. Hey, Dad, need help with your anatomy homework? Mister. New body wash from Old Spice. Somewhere between exits 45 and 50, an order was canceled. Somewhere between a hose and a radiator, there was trouble. Somewhere between noon and 2.30, there was a change of plans. And somewhere between where you are and where you're going, there's a Super 8. See you along the way. can get a free peek outside the Lone Star Pavilion here at Sunset Station in San Antonio. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you on Friday Night Fight. That eighth round for the former three-time champion Antonio Cermino, his busiest for the fight. He threw 98 punches and had a 29 to 10 connect edge against Joe Morales. Ninth round scheduled for 10. Former champion featherweight against the hometown kid who's been in with some of the best and is still looking for that big break in his career, Joe Morales. A little nervousness, I think, from Semenyo. And a little bit of alertness, probably, too, from Semenyo. He's thrown out that style, trying to stand on the outside using the jab. He's just coming forward now. And a point deduction. This really, really oh. hurt Semenyo in this fight. Because he was coming on a little bit down the stretch here, trying to impose his will, trying to use pressure to break down the less experienced Morales, try to capture the late rounds. He gets that point taken away at this point. That could turn out to be a huge, huge moment. Especially at this point in the fight when he needs these rounds, at least we do, we think he does. See now, you might see a little panic with Semenyo, even though he's probably too experienced to panic. But now he's really walking in, and as he walks in, giving up that height, maybe now Morales can catch him with a counter, a surprise shot. But you can see the change, Joe, the last few rounds. Semenyo no longer saying, I'm the taller guy, I'll just spot up Morales. 
Right now he's saying, I gotta be the more determined guy. I gotta be the more pressure guy. I have to walk forward. Change the fight. So a minus one point deduction here in the ninth round for the former champ. He is no stranger to point deduction. Both his fights, his losses at the prime of his career to Freddie Norwood. He lost points on low blows in those decisions. You gotta remember, Semenyo not used to having the crutch. With his size, he's used to staying outside pot shot. Setting up that right hand with the jab. He's not used to having the crutch forward. At 34, quick notice, blend the body. He's starting to breathe a little heavy this round from having pressed forward so much the last two rounds. That's why he's starting to step forward. Look, he's going nowhere right now, Savino. He's not going forward. He's not doing anything right now. He's a little tired. Look at his mouth. Look at that breathing. But to Morales to take a little advantage of Tomino slowing down here to notice it, to get a little more aggressive. He's got a moment in front of him right here, Morales. We'll see if Joe Morales can come up with a big win. We did all the work, so you get to have all the fun. Presenting the Aqua Tracks from Honda, the only all four-stroke lineup of personal watercraft in the world, including the brand new turbocharged two-seater, the R12X. Advanced four-stroke technology means high performance and low pollution. So the water stays cleaner, man. And so does the air. It's just what you'd expect from Honda. PR performance. To find a dealer near you, visit Honda.com. From now on, long distance, local, and high-speed internet will be together. Voice and data networks for companies large and small will be together. The innovations of one of the world's largest internet providers and the simplicity of one global network will be together. Together, under one name, MCI. Bottom right hand corner, you're gonna see where that point, that very big point, might be a very big point, got taken away the last round by the referee. Right there, Semenyo pushing down at the same time as he pushes down behind the head of Morales. He tries to throw an uppercut that doesn't land. The referee, although there were no warnings for that earlier, although a little warning earlier for roughhousing, but not for specifically for that, decides to take a point away, a big point, because that potentially could be a 10-8 round. Could indeed, could be a big advantage for San Antonio's Joe Morales. Tenth and final round. The punch numbers through nine rounds. Cermino landing 237 to Morales' 177. However, the power connects. Morales has the edge, 104 to 97. Teddy's scorecard, it's not close. 88 to 82, although many of those rounds, Teddy, as you have said, could have gone either way. Yes, many of those rounds, you could, hey, you could choose one element of boxing. You could say the pressure, the Semenyo, present forward, I give it to him. Or you could see, say the boxing of Morales, getting his way, making Semenyo come out of his trade, come out of his trait, come out of his style, forcing him to walk into shots, give up his height. Not a lot of real effective landing. Not a lot of real effective punching here. You can see Semenyo has been slowed down by the heat, the travel, the 34 years of age, the having to come out of his style a little bit and walk forward a lot more than he normally does. There's not a lot on his punches right now. And taking the fight on short notice. I think there's more left for Morales. The only thing with Morales is his temperament is cautious. I think the only thing holding him back is himself. If he lets it go, and he stops being so cautious, I think there's opportunities for him to have a real good round. And that plays right into the confidence factor that he's talked about. He said when he was within, in there with Kazemayor, in there with Zahir Rahim, he was so impressed by the other guy, he didn't let it go. Well, he wasn't confident. Well, funny you bring that up. I'm glad you bring that up. It's a real good point because that's what I'm seeing from a trainer's perspective. I'm seeing right now the only thing missing with Morales is confidence. Nothing else. Not conditioning, not style. 
He's got the right style. He's shown that tonight. He gives Firmino problems. He's got the right mind. He came in here willing and knowingly how to fight the right style. But right now, it's just a matter of putting the pedal to the metal. Confidence. But he's inside right now. Morales. He should be punching. He's inside those wall bombs. He should be really wailing away. So a real close fight in our main event. Tough to see which way it went. Could that point deduction in the ninth round be the difference? And get a win for the local guy, Joe Morales. We will find out. Bottom line, we've got to boost margins. Do more with less. Slash the ad budget. Scale back in the Pacific Rim. Actually, IT has a plan. We're going with Dell. Dell's as focused on you as they are on driving down costs. Power Edge servers, Intel Xeon processors. It's the flexibility you need. And that PN2 Friday Night Fight presented by Miller Lite. Tell it over a great tasting, less filling Miller Lite. It's Miller time. And in part by Everlast, the choice of champions since 1910. And Minwax, turn your house into a beautiful home with Minwax wood stains and finishes. The Hemisphere Tower. The bright lights of San Antonio. The total punches through 10 rounds between Antonio Cermino and Joe Morales. 263-199 edge for the former champ. Petty Atlas's scorecard, 97-92, but as Petty admitted, a lot of those rounds could have gone either way. Let's get the official word from Tom Garcia. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a decision. We go to the cards. Judge Ray Hawkins scores the bout, 96-93. Judge Rick Crocker scores the bout 97 to 92. And Judge Joel Elizondo scores the bout 95 94. With a unanimous decision, your winner, Joe Morales. Morales. Well, that is what Joe Morales has been looking for in his career. He's been in against Kazamayor, Zahir Rahim. Finally, a breakthrough win against the former champ. Joe Morales moves to 19 and 7 and pleases the hometown crowd. Ryan and Max. All right, Joe, an excellent point there, too, because he's going in with world-class competition against some very, very tough guys. Nice to see a guy like that get a decision. Well, that's what I said at the top of the show, a live guy who, if you're not careful, will upset you. This past weekend, let's get some highlights in here on Friday Night Fights this past weekend. Panchito Bajado in the ring on the night before his 20th birthday against William Adamian 